Last night, we'll watch them in detail and track the CME. Insight on the U.S. cold wave is coming, planet formation, recurring nova in the last disaster cycle catastrophe. Starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, we find the last day brought not only the filament eruptions top left, but increasing activity in general across the sun. The sunspot cycle is ramping up. The eruption of the filaments shows why tracking the CME cloud of plasma through space is important. It may have been north on the sun, but the eruption sent it out along the current sheet, maintaining its tornado-like vortex, heading about 60 degrees away from Earth, but would have been aimed directly at us if it had erupted about two or three days later. Solar wind up next. Yellow density bump yesterday followed by surging speed and temperature in purple and green below is the arrival of a coronal hole stream. The density bump is like snow built up on the leading edge of a shovel blade. The coronal hole stream is faster than the ambient solar wind out ahead of it, catches up to it, and bunches it up for a density shock ahead of the faster, hotter stream. Geomagnetic conditions have been unstable for hours. We flirted with geomagnetic storm deviations, even if the official KP index chart only shows the yellow. Quick item of note is a sun-diving comet that came in yesterday morning, brightening, fading, and ultimately destruction. That cold snap coming to the USA is not just a dip in the jet stream, which is here and will be a big part of it, but also the polar vortex in the north is nearly formed, but nearly formed mimics weak vortex conditions. That's when cold is funneled down to lower latitudes. This is going to get chilly. Let's start the space science aesthetically today. NGC 2798 and 2799. They nicknamed it a cosmic waterfall, and it's not like I don't see that, but hard not to see the devouring of one galaxy by another. Let's Hubble on that one. Up next, it's time to rewrite the cosmos from the other end of the scale that we usually focus on, which would be the large scale. But in this star system half a million years old, definitively still in protostellar status, there's already evidence of planet formation. Turns out, there may not be this hundreds of millions to billions of years gap between the formation of the star and the planets. Time to redo some math. A quick Easter egg for those who watched yesterday's program and have seen our other internal structure of Earth discussions. New results challenge prior homogeneity assumptions about the interior of Earth, you don't say. It's a more complex picture than simple concentric shells of sameness. On to a recurrent nova, caught at peak brightness last year. The soft X-ray peak came to an accretion mechanism binary, and that's the third nova event at that star system that scientists have seen. There are other ways to make a star accumulate material and blast it away dramatically, like that poor little star we recently saw wandered into a galactic cloud. Boom. Sadly, the nova isotope evidence here on Earth suggests our Sun encounters such a scenario on a cyclical basis, not just in time, but like clockwork around the globe somehow knowing to hit the region just west of the previous event. So we expect the next solar flash over Africa, Europe, and the western Middle East, whereas the last one was over Asia. And while the next shell impact is expected over the Pacific, the last shell impact clearly devastated the Americas, including the impactor pieces of the shell and microtectite glass beads. Scientists now think that the end of the Clovis use of certain weapons coincides with the exact time that we have long believed the last nova occurred, which also corresponds to the disappearance of the megafauna as well. While the Clovis themselves wouldn't disappear entirely from the Americas until well into the aftermath of the Younger Dryas, they had a major shift in how they lived, and it happened pretty much simultaneously across North and South America. 